Welcome again. Today we will make a brief presentation of the fundamentals of sensitivity analysis. Before getting into the details of sensitivity analysis, I advise you to review a video called, The Simplex Method in Matrix Form, which you can find on this channel. The reason of this recommendation, is that the simplex method in matrix form, is the basis of the sensitivity analysis. We will start the presentation using the problem we presented in that video. The first step, is to transform this problem into a system of equalities. This is done by adding slack, surplus and artificial variables as needed. Once we have the system of equations, we must obtain the vectors and matrices used in the matrix form of the simplex method. X is the vector that represent the variables involved in the problem. C represents the vector of coefficients of these variables in the objective function. A is the matrix with the coefficients of each variable and the constraints. And B is the vector with the right hand side value of the constraints. The sensitivity analysis always starts considering the final solution of the problem. For this problem, we had reached a solution formed by the basis x1, s3, and x2. With the columns of these variables in matrix A, we obtain matrix B. And we obtain its inverse. We only need to add the vector of coefficients of the basic solution in the objective function. This vector is formed with the values of the coefficients of x1, s3, and x2 in the objective function, which are also found in vector c. Now, let us recall that the tabular representation of the simplex is as follows. That is, if we know the variables in the solution, and we perform these operations with matrices, then we can fill the last table of the simplex method. When we do this operations, the simplex table will be transformed into the following table. Sensitivity analysis is related to the changes in this table, when some of the values in the original problem change. In particular, the sensitivity analysis reports of different software packages tend to show us the changes in the final table when the objective function changes or when the resources column changes. When you analyze these changes, always remember that the values that appear on the right hand side of the table and the values that appear on the top row of the table must be non-negative. Recall that the values that appear on the right hand side represent the value of the variables in the solution, and by definition, the variables must be greater than or equal to zero. Moreover, if there were some negative values on the top row of the table, it will mean that we have not reached the optimal solution. I will rearrange the information. Let us start analyzing the range in which the right hand side values of the constraints can vary. For instance, let us analyze the range in which the first resource can vary. Currently, the value of that resource is 20. But let us find out how much this value can change without affecting the solution of the problem. That is, in which range of values of this resource, the basic variables in the solution will remain basic. To achieve this, we will do the following. Our vector B is the vector 20, 18, 12. And now we change it to the vector B1, 18, 12. We now multiply B inverse times B prime. The result of the multiplication is the following. This result shows the values that appear on the right hand side of the table. For instance, if B1 is 20, the results are the same values we have in the table. As we have mentioned, all of these values must be greater than or equal to zero. And hence, we get the following inequalities. When we plot the graph with the solutions of the inequalities, we observe that the three inequalities are satisfied if the value of B1 is between 18 and 36. And this is the range in which B1 can oscillate. For instance, 
If the value of B1 is 25, we can quickly find the solution to the new problem. We substitute the vector B by 25, 18, 12. Then, we multiply B inverse times B prime. And the result, are the new values of the right hand side of the table. If we want to totally update the solution, we must multiply the vector with the basic coefficients times this vector. The value found corresponds to the new value of the objective function. And thus we have updated the solution when B1 is 25. Another of the data that regularly is updated in the software packages, is the shadow price. The shadow price of a resource, is the number of units that the objective function value increases when we have an additional unit of this resource. For instance, suppose we are trying to find the shadow price of the first resource. Currently we only have 20 units available of the first resource. We must observe what is the change in the objective function if instead of having 20 units we had 21. This is very similar to what we just did. We let vector B be 21, 18, 12. We then multiply B inverse times B prime. Now we multiply the vector of coefficients of the basis by this result. If you compare this answer with the value of the objective function in the original problem, you will realize that the objective function has increased one unit, and therefore, the shadow price of the first resource is one. Now let us discuss what happens when the cost coefficients of the objective function change. You must observe that in the objective function it is not possible to modify the coefficients of the slack variables, the surplus variables, or the artificial variables. Consequently, in this example it is only possible to modify the cost coefficients of the variables x1 and x2. Let us investigate what is the range of the variable x1, in such a way, that the current basic variables continue being part of the solution. Let us call C1 the coefficient of x1 in the objective function. Therefore, vector C is represented as. Besides, recall that B inverse times A is the yellow section in the final table. Moreover, since x1 is a basic variable, then the vector of coefficients of the basis will now be C1, 0, 4. Multiplying this vector by the previous matrix, we obtain the following. Now, from this vector, we must subtract vector C. As we mentioned earlier, these values must be greater than or equal to 0. And then, C1 minus 4, and minus C1 plus 8, must be greater than or equal to 0. It can be observed in the graph that the interval in which both inequalities are satisfied is the interval, 4, 8. If we wish to change the value of C1 within this interval, then we can update the value of the objective function very quickly. For instance, suppose that the coefficient of x1 in the objective function is 7. Then, vector C will be the vector, 7, 4, 0. 0, 0, minus m. The vector of coefficients of the basis will be, 7, 0, 4. We will multiply this vector by b inverse a. And the result of this multiplication is. And by subtracting vector c, we obtain the objective function rho. This results, substitute the results in the first row of the simplex table. This is what is called sensitivity analysis. All these results are regularly offered by the computational programs. For instance, when we use Lindo to solve this problem, we will obtain the following report. That part indicates the optimal value of Z. This section shows the optimal values of the variables. 
In this section, the shadow prices of each one of the equations are shown. Recall that the shadow price of the first resource is 1. This section describes the range in which the coefficients of the variables in the objective function can vary. For instance, the current coefficient of variable x1 is 5. This coefficient can increase up to 3 units and can decrease 1 unit. Which means that C1 can vary between 4 and 8. And this was one of the results we found in this video. Finally, this section shows the ranges in which the resources can vary. For instance, the report shows that the value of the first resource is 20. And that the resource can increase by up to 16 units. And decrease by 2 units. That is, the first resource can take on values between 18 and 36 units. This was another of the results found in this session. Well, I hope this video has been useful. See you soon.